Valkyrie Cycle, a Monster Hearts 2 actual play podcast by Midnight Ceremonies Media. Episode 4, World at Your Fingertips. Hi everyone, I'm Karina Revia, and I play Cesar Rodriguez Reyes, and I'm also one of our editors for this season. Before we begin the episode, just a few quick reminders. If you're tweeting or posting about the show online, please use hashtag the Valkyrie Cycle or hashtag TVC spoilers to tag your content and to help us see anything you'd like to share with us. You can follow our official accounts at Midnight C Media on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok for updates and additional information about this show and more. Finally, a warning that this season deals with heavy things including reoccurring and intense depictions of generational trauma, internalized homophobia, violence, and inter-party conflict. For episode-specific content warnings, please check the episode description or visit our website at midnightceremoniesmedia.com. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoy episode four of The Valkyrie Cycle, World at Your Fingertips. We're going to pick up um, right where we left off because everyone else is heading home. Um, so we're going to pick up, um, you know, just just because I'm a little evil, just because I'm a little fun guy. Um, yeah, we're not going to pick up with Starfire and Cassie. We're going to move to um, Caesar. Um, so you, you go home, right? Yeah. Um, you pull into the driveway, park your car in like the garage, um, head inside, you head inside your house and, um, it serves a light on in the living room. Okay. Um, I take a deep breath, gather myself and then go in. You see that your grandmother, Guadalupe is up, um, She's an older uh, Latina woman um, with like, her hair is still like done perfectly, but at the moment she's um, in a like plush, like gray robe um, that's tied. And uh, she's sitting in an armchair, the book in her lap, like a single lamp on. Um, And as you come in, uh, she puts it down, takes her glasses off. Where have you been? I was out with friends. Where? I was at the Strisciante's house. You see that your grandmother narrows her eyes and says, and what have I told you about them? Hmm? You haven't told me a lot, actually. I believe I've told you that they're dangerous, that they're not our allies. And what do you do? You go to their home? You make yourself vulnerable in front of her? You might not be afraid of them. Miho, but I can smell the alcohol on you. I'm fine. I didn't make a scene. And now I'm here. You see that your grandmother, um, like, just looks at you for a moment and you realize now, like, that you're kind, you're not put together. Um, You were attacked in the snow and you had a very crazy conversation, like two crazy conversations in like the same night. And so you actually kind of like look a little bit like a mess. And um, your grandmother sees that and says, look at you, you're a mess right now. Caesar, did you let 
the Strisciante child see you like that? No. I'm not an idiot. She sighs and like stands up and uh, walks over like in front of you and like, you know, puts her hands on your, on like either side of your shoulders and says, um, Caesar, what are you? I'm Reyes. Good. Act like it. Okay. Go to bed. Okay. And she sits back down. Um, you yeah, know, he leaves immediately. Uh, do you go back up to your room? Yes. Um, do you do anything in particular while you're up there? Or do you just go to sleep? Do I know if Brianna's home yet? Um, she should be here. She didn't tell you that she was going to, she told me she'd be out, but she didn't say like she was going to be out all night. Can I just like check on her room to make sure she's like here and okay? Yeah. Do you like head to her room instead of yours and uh, you see that there's like a light shining out from under the door? Uh, yeah, I'll knock on her door. You hear your little sister call, um, come in. Yeah, I'll come in. Um, She's like curled up in her bed um, with like a laptop on her like lap and uh, headphones on. Um, Her room is like very like, um, it's very teenage girl, but like kind of subdued. Uh, It's like, you know, like tan walls, but like that have like a bunch of like band posters up on like, like boy band posters. She's got like some old One Direction posters. I think that Brianna took the the One Direction breaking up pretty hard. Um, (laughs) uh, And, you know, like, um, like a pink bedspread and like a, a, like cute, like very plush rug. And, but she like pulls her headphones off as you come in. Um, hey, what's up? Hey, are you, you good? Yeah, are you good? You look- Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm fine. Okay, uh, how was the party? Um, it was, you know, a high school party. It was not that good. Oh, cool. Or sorry, I guess. I guess that, yeah. No, who cares? It doesn't matter. Can you, can you promise me something? Sure. Be careful. Don't go off on your own. Don't go into the woods alone. Just stay safe and stay with people. Okay. Sure. There's zombies in the woods, okay? What? What? Is this? Yes. Yes. What the? F- There's zombies? There's at least Oh my God, one is zombie. this like- there was. Get, wait, did, are you bitten? I am not a zombie. Oh my god. Did you get did you get no, bitten though? N- no, no. Oh my god. I okay, should not like, have... are you sure though? Yes. Listen, am... that's how people that's how people get fucked up in The Walking Dead. Okay, I would tell you. And I have not gotten bitten. Okay. It's fine. Wait, what okay? the f- Did you tell Abuela? No, I we had a conversation. It's no. Okay. Do you know? I can't believe we're in a fucking zombie apocalypse. We are. Oh, God. No, it's. Do you know Riley Hanlon? Yeah, we're in, like, freshman English together. Okay, that doesn't sound like you're friends. Are you friends? I mean, what? 
kind of i mean sometimes sometimes you like you know play video games online together but like you know we don't eat lunch together because all their friends kind of are like basketball guys and they kind of suck okay riley is a good kid are they a zombie no you should maybe be friends with them riley is a werewolf her eyes go so huge you okay we're not human you kind of have to assume there's other people that are not human no why would i think that i i don't know okay um the Hamlins are good. And I just, I just, I don't know. I, I want you to stay safe. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm worried about you. Maybe I shouldn't be, I don't know. Um, she like, gets up and um, gives you a hug and says, you don't have to be worried about me. I'm like, fine, but thanks. And I'll, I guess, I don't know, hang out with a weird werewolf kid if that's what you want. That would actually make me feel better. Also, you're saying that? I thought the same thing earlier today that I was fine and didn't what worry happened? about me and then i i got attacked by the zombie that's what happened are you like are you okay y- yes i'm okay oh i mean okay um maybe you should maybe you should tell abuela i am not doing that tonight that can wait Okay. Oh, um, she like pulls, pulls back and like sits back on her bed and says, um, uh, you weren't, you missed it because you, you weren't here, but, um, Reina's coming home for spring break. Oh. In like a week, like a couple days for a week. A couple of days or a week. That is a big difference. I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> okay. Okay. Ask her about it. I. No. Whatever. Whatever. She lives here too. She can come home whenever she wants. <sighs> okay. Um, is there like anything else? I'm like watching a movie, so. Okay, sorry. I didn't know me getting attacked no, by zombies was less wanna, important. Hey, do you want to watch it with me? I mean, like, yeah, zombie apocalypse, but also I'm like in the middle of something. <laughs> um, I had a long night. I'm gonna go, but um, I love you. I love you too. Yeah. Yeah. He'll leave. Okay. You go back to your room. At a certain point, you hear, like, at some point as you're, like, getting undressed and getting ready for bed, um, you hear, like, the sound of someone walking down the hall and familiar footsteps of your grandmother and... They slow in front of your door, but there's no knock and she keeps going. Okay. We're gonna cut over to uh, Lucian. Lucian. Yeah. Uh, you walk home, right? From, okay. 
So you got home like late, like close to 1 a.m. Um, I mean, you're a werewolf, so you run hot, but you've been in the cold for like hours now. Um, and <laughs> you wore your stupid gauzy like button down. So you. <laughs> it's pretty cold. Um, you're covered in snow from like the knees down, um, soaking wet, shivering a little bit. When you finally get to the Astor, well, I guess the Astors actually have an estate. (laughs) Um, uh, your giant fucking house, uh, that only you and your father live in. Do you head inside? Yep. Go ahead and sign the house. Um, and sitting also in the living room. Um, well, I guess for him, it's a sort of sitting room um, uh, in the middle of the uh, long brown leather couch is Arthur Astor. Still dressed in the suit, but the jacket sort of like tossed over the back of the couch. Um, His tie is loosened, but not undone. Uh, Nothing in his lap. Just a single light on, like a spotlight. And he's sitting there waiting for you. I walk within a feasible distance of him that we're conversing but not mm-hmm. closer mm-hmm. he has like his arms crossed and he's sitting there and like there's only one light on and it's on him like a spotlight but from behind so his face is just like shrouded in shadow and he says what did I tell you when you left the house. Don't make a mess of myself, sir. Do you think you followed my instructions? No, sir. He stands up. Doesn't walk any closer. Just looks down on you and says, You are not a part of this town, Lucian. You are not one of those mindless, squalling children that needs parties to escape the suffocating reality that they'll never amount to anything. You are my son, Lucian Astor. You have my name, and you live in my house. He crosses his arms again across his chest and takes a breath. You have the world at your fingertips because I gave it to you. And you waste my time by losing control of yourself and dragging my name through the mud. Um. I think Lucian at this point, the shaking that he's had from when he was with Caesar and um, in opposition towards Luna sort of hasn't really gone away. And um, I think that there's like tremors of that in his uh, standing there. He's standing there, you know, stock still ramrod straight and then I think he responds uh, sort of I am sorry I understand what you have done for me and 
I understand that I am not becoming what I need to for you. He stands there and says, You know, I thought, Lucian, that this lycanthrop thing you have going on was a sign of initiative. Maybe you'd finally grown a spine. But instead, you huddle in your room, wasting your power. Instead, you're weak. He puts a heavy hand on your shoulder and looks directly in your eyes. I am remaking this world for you. Do not fucking waste it. Do you understand me? Um, I think. Um, I think Lucian. Uh, starts crying. And um, I don't, I think he looks down. I don't think he looks at his dad. I don't think he responds. You don't look up, so you don't see his expression. But you can hear in his voice, disgust. And he takes his hand off your shoulder. And he says, I don't want to see your crocodile tears, Lucian. So go up to your room and put yourself together. And tomorrow, you're going to go get your car from wherever it is that you left it and you're going to bring it back here. And then you're going to give me your keys. He's not gonna say anything. Does he go to his room? I think he finally looks up. He says, Do you remember that, that um, trip we went on at one time? I think I was 10 or something. We uh, went hunting. Oh, in the Appalachian Mountains. And uh, taught me what it was like to kill something. I think I'm ready to again. You say that, and there's just a hint, a glimmer of pride in his eye. And he says, I'll see it when I believe it. No, wait, fuck. I'll believe it when I see it. Fuck. (laughs) Shit. Uh, He doesn't fuck that up. He would never. Um, I fucked that up. Uh, And then I think he, uh, then I I think, well, then then he would say, 
Yeah. Want to see it again? Why don't we go out this weekend? I think he pauses again and then after doesn't let him say whatever neck he's going to say, whatever Arthur's going to say next. And then he's just like, I'll find my power. And you can watch it happen. I'll kill again. Sir, I'll kill again. Just point and I'll shoot. And then I think he walks up to wherever he is and gets down on one knee, sort of like a knight in front of a king. Arthur stares down at you, pinning you to the spot. And he says, well, if you're so ready, see what I can do. But you better not disappoint me. He then looks back up and says, I would never do that. (laughs) You're doing it right now. Does he walk away? He stands there and he says, Go to your room, son. Lucian says, Yes, sir, and he gets up and he goes to his room. As you're like just leaving the, like, the arch doorway out of the like the sitting room um you hear arthur call after you get that twang out of your voice boy you're my son not some two-bit from appalachia yes sir I think Lucian goes up to his room and he draws the curtains open and he feels the moonlight on his skin. He can feel everything underneath it. All the parts of himself that he knows what they are. I think he looks at parts of himself that he doesn't know where they're from. He checks his phone, sees that Caesar texted him. I think he says, he like texts back and says, we should talk. Meet me at the church at 4 a.m. on Sunday. And he sends that. And then he probably looks around at his room. Everything's new. And he, you know, gets changed, goes to bed. I think he runs his hand over his other hand, looks at a mole on it, doesn't know where it came from. And he tries to sleep dreaming of things he wish he could remember. We come back, the camera pans to a forest, shrouded in white. Um, 
and a single figure on the edge of a ring of trees staring in on a family and a wolf racing towards them. Starfire, when you see, you're watching the Hanlins from outside in the snow. Um, what do you do? I think she sits there for longer than she intended to at some point becomes aware that it's weird for her to keep just looking through the window to these people's house. But we'll sit a little bit longer, just kind of keep watching, convince herself that it's out of curiosity about them being wolves and, you know, chosen investigation type things. But she just wants to watch the family a bit longer. You can like sort of see into um, like the, the back windows like face sort of like the dining room, which is like right off the kitchen. So you can see um, uh, Tess, who's their mom. Um, this like older black woman, very short, like Afro that's like got a little bit of gray in it. Um, butch uh, in a like, I guess you pro- maybe wouldn't be able to make it out from here, but she's wearing like a like a volleyball mom shirt, like t-shirt. Um, Cause Luna's on the volleyball team and um, uh, is like making, like looks like she's like, I don't know, making like some tea or something for herself. And um, Luna and Riley are like sitting at the kitchen table. Um, Riley's swinging their legs on like the tall seat. Cassie, you are following the scent, following the trail that Luna left behind and following it to the same house. When Cassie gets there, he slows as he approaches still in wolf form for now and he stops at the front door like the steps that would lead up to it and they plant their paws in the snow and howl and it's a bit bone chilling because there's not really like a message in it. There's nothing that he's intending to say, but it's a little bit like a warning, a call to the people that he knows are inside the house. And once he howls, he like rolls one shoulder and then rolls another and he shifts back. <laughs> he shifts back into his human form and he's not shaking anymore and his eyes are empty but they're full of a raw conviction and he waits uh from the other side of the house starfire you hear this howl um would you recognize it as being cassie's I think so, since, especially since Starfire saw Cassie in wolf form earlier. And for the second time today, Starfire sees or hears Cassie and thinks she's coming for her to be with her. And for the second time today, Starfire's wrong. You hear their howl and you see through the window. All three people inside the house react to that immediately. Tess puts her uh, mug down on the counter and looks over um, at Luna and Riley, her shoulders tensed. Riley looks scared and they've shrunk in their seat. Luna looks a little surprised. Uh, She didn't expect this tonight. 
I'm a little pissed and a little bit satisfied. And she pushes out from the table. Am I able to Spider-Man my way through the tree line around to the kind of towards the front of the house? Yeah. Okay, I'll do that. Yeah. Um, you get you get there like about the same time that um, someone opens the door. Uh, and you see um, Cassie. You see Luna standing there, changed into pajamas, cozy sweatpants with Thorn Ridge volleyball down the side. Um, and she's in like like a band hoodie. Clearly not hers. Uh, it's like too big. Um, her locks are down and she's standing there uh, silhouetted by the light from inside the house. Can I help you? Hi. I realized that we have some unfinished business to attend to because I'm a bit tired of this whole circling thing that we've had going on for the last few months. She nods and glances over her shoulder, steps into the snow, shuts the door behind her, says, um, guess you picked the night for it, huh? Hmm. Well. As much as I'd love to give the neighborhood a show, maybe you should take this out back. Cassie thinks, just does a curt nod and waits uh, for Luna to move. She heads down the front steps and starts heading around the house towards the woods behind it. Cassie follows at a reasonable distance. Uh, Starfire, you watch all of this. I would also kind of keep pace with Luna as she walks back. If I can follow through the tree line, just kind of walking on a branch, jump to another branch, trying to Mm -hmm. keep it mostly quiet. Mm -hmm. Luna takes you around and heads into the woods. And she walks for a while, like five, 10 minutes, trying to put a lot of space between between like the house and the two of you. Um, until finally she gets to like a little clearing, stops in the middle of it and turns and looks at you, sort of opens her arms and says, well, Let's get to it, shall we, Cassie? What was your mom like when they found her? She turns immediately. She doesn't fucking respond to that. You barely even have time to like catch a glimpse of her face before it is becoming a wolf. And um, not the wolf who bit you. Luna's wolf is dark gray. Um, that's darker along her back and like silver on her underbelly and on her paws. Um, she has black fur on like her ears and her tail and her muzzle and brown eyes and a patch of black fur on her chest in the shape of a crescent moon. And she's bigger than you. She's bigger than you as a human and she's bigger than you as a wolf. And she fucking towers over you and is growling. Cassie doesn't go to shift. He doesn't move. He just stares. 
I know that you think her death is my fault, and it is. It is. But I, I'm not stupid. You are different. You didn't turn me. But me existing is your fault. Because if it wasn't you who turned me, it was someone you knew. They didn't finish the fucking job. And now I'm here. Me existing is your fault. So why don't you fucking do something about it? And I'm going to pull the string that I have on Luna to tempt her to attack me. Starfire, you watch and you hear all of this. And you see that Luna, her muscles are like coiling under her fur. And when Cassie says his last line, she springs at them and pins Cassie into the snow. Uh, A single paw, like, on their chest, like, put like pushing them down and just snarls and growls over your face like a wolf asking you to submit cassie doesn't move or she lets she she doesn't move to do anything but she doesn't submit her eyes are like locked onto luna's she's just staring Do you do anything, Starfire? Not yet. You see that after a moment, Luna steps off of you and shifts back to her human form. And she looks up at you, she looks at you and says, if you're not gonna shift, get up, and we can do this on equal footing. Cassie stands. Luna takes a fucking swing at you and just runs over and decks you in the face, knocking you back down to the snow. Take one harm. Cassie doesn't do anything. He takes the hit, but he stands back up. Luna is a person who's sort of always in control. And even now, um, she's totally herself. There's no wolf trying to escape or break free because she is the wolf. She is the one who's controlling herself. And she is the master of her own body and her own and her own life. And as you stand back up, she punches you again and knocks you down again. And she stands over you and is like breathing hard and yelling. And she says, is this what you want? You want me to just keep biting, keep pushing you down again? Cause I will, I will knock you down again and again. As many times as you want, Cassie. Cassie's gonna reach up and like grab at her shirt and like try to pull her down a bit, then fucking do it. Starfire is going to jump from her place in the tree, land in the snow behind Cassie, and just quietly go. Cassie? She lets go of Luna's shirt. She turns, she like turns her head to like a starfire. And there's like fear in Cassie's eyes, but it's not like at starfire. She's not scared of starfire, but he is 
realizing that he's realizing what Starfire being here means because he didn't mean any of his friends to see him like this. What is Luna doing right now? She's still sort of standing over Cassie, looking between the two of you, waiting for Starfire to do something. Starfire just makes and holds eye contact with Cassie. As like the seconds pass, Cassie's expression crumbles more and more. And he like looks down at the snow and he moves to try and get out from under Luna to stand back up. Luna lets you get up. You shouldn't be here. Yeah, I know. Are you okay? Cassie doesn't answer. They started a fight, so she probably finish it. Is that what you want? Do we have a choice? You always have a choice. Cassie takes a breath and turns to face Luna. Who was it that actually turned me? Because it wasn't you. She looks down. And she looks back up and says, doesn't matter. Doesn't fucking matter. I'm the wolf in charge. And if you have a problem with any wolves in town, any of the wolves that belong to me, you fight me. Doesn't matter who bit you. You fight me. Cassie goes over. She doesn't move to strike Luna, but she moves to get in her face and look in her eyes. I thought that the thing that bit me didn't have a soul or anything human behind it because the way that I was attacked, it was brutal. It moved to kill. And when I thought that it was you. You could have said something, anything, because I didn't know what was happening to me. And I had to figure it out by myself, alone. I don't care who it was that attacked me. I don't care that I was turned because it's a part of me now, yeah? But next time, you or whatever wolf is under your charge at least have the decency to fix what you break Cassie takes a step back and then another step Luna stares at you and says you you don't know anything then tell me i can't why not it's not do you know what it's like to be responsible do you know what it's like to be the fucking pack leader to take over after your mother fucking dies? And maybe it wasn't your fault. 
Who the fuck else do I blame? You don't know what happened. And I can't fucking tell you. But I'm sorry you were turned. I'm sorry that it happened the way it did. And if maybe, if maybe my mom hadn't fucking died, maybe I would have told you. Sorry, I've been a little caught up in my grief. I'm sorry. She didn't deserve to die like that. Well, the world doesn't like to give us what we deserve, does it? No. <sighs> Have a good night. And she turns, starts walking back the direction that they took. Luna stands there and for a moment and then calls after you. Don't fucking come back to my house. Don't come near my family. I'll fucking rip your throat out. Understood. Good. You hear the sound of a wolf shifting behind you, and she darts off into the trees. So what's going on? I just thought um, I should have probably dealt with that earlier, so. Okay. Are you okay? I'll be fine. What were you doing? I think there's some sort of fight in the woods. Wolf tracks leading away, so hmm. I ended up here. You think they know anything about the zombies? I think they probably do. But I was not asking about the zombies. I was asking about you. So. Did it help at all? Why did you just let her punch you? Why didn't you fight back? Because it was a little bit my fault. It's always a little bit everyone's fault. I don't know. Cassie? You didn't kill her mom. She's hurt and she needs someone to blame. But I, if I hadn't, if I hadn't been in those woods, this would all be so much easier. Or at least if I had, I know, but we can't turn back time. Or change it. No matter how much we want to. Mm. And if the wolf had never been in the woods, they never would have bit you. And maybe if you'd been standing on the other side of the platform, it would have gone in a different direction. There's always a million what ifs and what thens. But knowing that doesn't change anything, I guess. I'm sorry it happened the way it did. But chance is not your choice. It's what you do after that. That's your choice. 
Cassie like stops and turns to face Starfire. And she like she like steps forward and she like um hunches over a little bit to like knock her forehead against Starfire's. And she like raises her arms up a little bit to go for a hug. Starfire hugs Cassie for probably the first time. Cassie like sinks into the hug. He wraps his arms around her and like presses her into him. Thank you. I got you, okay? And I've got you. Yeah, I know. And she pulls back and she like grabs Starfire's face and like looks into her eyes. I've got you. Yeah. Yeah, um. Thanks, cuz. Always supernova. And she goes back into the hug. Starfire kind of turns her face away from Cassie, but presses her face into her shoulder. And then I think holds on to him a little bit longer than normal. I think Cassie gives very good hugs. <laughs> yeah. Cassie stays on the hook for as long as Starfire does. You want to go to a fucking diner? Please. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's do it. Where's Lucian? He needed some time alone, so. Okay. Starfire hugs Cassie a little tighter for a second. Yeah, sounds good. The diner is called Susie's Kitchen. It is a classic 60s style chrome diner, uh, open 24 hours, uh, sort of on the outskirts of town. It's like a truck stop kind of. Um, and uh, it's a Friday night uh, at like 1 a.m. So it's a little empty. Uh, and you guys come inside. There's like low music playing on like the juke jukebox. You see that Pam is there. She's got like a textbook and a notebook open on like the counter and she's doing homework. Uh, and looks up when you guys come in and says, um, your booth is open. Thank you. Appreciate it. We will. All right. Yep. Starfire will head that way. <laughs> You guys hang out at the diner for a while. How do you get home? You want me to drop you off at your house? You have a car? No. I can bike. <laughs> oh, she like yeah. claw does a little yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that sounds fucking badass. And I am here for it. Yeah, that sounds good. All right. You're safe getting home. Yeah. Oh my God, Lucian's car is. Oh fuck. Fuck. Oh, it's oh. probably <gasps> over at. Oh. <gasps> His car is gonna get fucking wrecked. Well, even if we wanted to do anything about it, we don't have the keys. Uh. I could so try to hotwire his car. He would never forgive me. But then again, I would be saving his car from Sylvia and I've always wanted to learn. So it would be a really good excuse to practice. Mm. <laughs> and then his majesty can't come after me because, you know, I was trying to help. I saved his car, just like, you know, maybe 70% of it. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. All right. Do you have any money? Cause um, I <laughs> Cassie starts digging around in her pockets. Starfire <laughs> does the same. Oh my uh, god! Do neither of you have cash on you? Uh, 
you guys are like some like there's only like a couple other people in the diner right now so pam like comes over and like to give you a like the ticket kind of notices that you guys are being a little you guys are like searching your pockets and stuff and she's just like you know the last time you were here your that friend of yours gave me like a hundred dollars for as a tip so it's on the fucking house oh you're a lifesaver thank you we will make sure he has extra cash the next time he comes in (laughs) Thanks. Your friend is kind of putting me through grad school at the moment. So, you know, yeah, I appreciate yeah, totally. it. Of course, we'll make sure that we bring him with us next time. Thanks. Yep. Cool. As we race. leave. <laughs> yeah, I totally <laughs> slid out of the book on the way to the door already. Uh, okay, so... We are the worst. Going to go we are the worst. Hotwire a car? Is yep. that the plan that you went yep. on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, you look up a YouTube tutorial. <laughs> you can you got a screwdriver. You can hotwire the car. I have a screwdriver. I absolutely do not have cash on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you can hotwire the car. Um, I just could do f- that? <laughs> yeah. I'll let you do that. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <laughs> I, I finish hotwiring the car and then <laughs> stand up, look at Cassie, go, I am the fucking coolest. And Lucian Astor owes me so much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We, where do we... So, okay, you've done it. You know, to be totally honest, I hadn't thought that far ahead because I didn't think it was going to work. So now I don't know. We could... uh, Get you home and then I can leave it outside my house? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a good, good plan. Yeah. You know how to drive. Uh I taught myself a while ago, so Okay, yeah, we'll just do a little we'll do a little lesson on the yeah. way there. I I got you. I got you. I'm I'm a good I'm a much better driver than Lucian Astor, so I got you. <laughs> sweet, sweet. Uh I jump into the driver's seat and uh have my moment of Jesus Christ when the wings come up and put those down (laughs) very quickly um all right Cass ready yep and we are driving with haste (laughs) towards my house you do that um so Cassie drops off Starfire with Lucian's car and then drives Lucian's car back to their house Probably okay. text Lucian at some point, like, hey, we rescued your car. Fucking <laughs> know me, man. It's at Cassie's. If because he's definitely still up at this point, probably <laughs> he would text back. Um just oh god, I think he would you'd see like the bubbles come up a couple times <laughs> <laughs> before before he 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 finally sends. This is the greatest betrayal i've ever felt in my life and i hope you know that (laughs) send thank you send keep it my dad wants to take it away from me so i would rather he assume it's stolen send (laughs) uh starfire probably right after that also fuck you i don't owe you anything (laughs) uh starfire sends back two things uh the first thing is for uh fine i'll keep your secrets one condition we get to drive period send uh and then second thing is i assume at some point starfire asked cassie to take a photo of her actively hot the car <laughs> and sends that 
Yeah, it's like I, it's like a blurry <laughs> shot of the like uh, Starfire like kneeling at the car, and then hand, Cass's hand is doing like a thumbs up in front of the camera, but it's blurry. <laughs> he, he replies just to to Cassie and says "et tu brute," <laughs> and that's it. Then he turns off his phone. And- <laughs> okay. Um. With that. Um. Eden, Stephanie, and Sylvia all made it home fine. And you all had, well, Sylvia never left home. You're still a snake. <laughs> but you had, you all had, you know what? Honestly, fairly pretty normal nights. Uh, considering sure. it, <laughs> like, consider considering everybody else, like you just went home and went to bed and well, um, good for you. There is one thing I want to do that Stephanie oh. is going to do before bed. Okay. Which is so. Oh, first, also, I want to make a note. Stephanie left her best friend bracelet or her best friend necklace and her charm bracelet, matching charm bracelet that she had with Caleb at Sylvia's, probably on the dresser where Sylvia could see. Second, um, so. Stephanie ended the night Stephanie was doing was searching up spells online. And after she does that, after she closes her laptop, she's going to go around her room collecting the Polaroids that she has pinned up on the walls various Polaroids that she has of Sylvia and her and Caleb and her. And I think unlike the Polaroids that she has hidden in her nightstand drawer, these are not the memories she wants to keep and hide away. And so she um, collects them in a little pile in like a little, I don't know, she probably has fancy like ceramic bowls for like jewelry dishes or whatever and puts them all there and lights a match and burns them. And she watches smiling images of her and Sylvia the flame curl up around them and burn away once the fire is out she turns off her light and goes to sleep the next morning Sylvia (coughs) you wake up um and uh do you like you know unshift wa- start walking around the house yeah um Sylvia's gonna wake up go back to human form um grab Regina she's gonna go back to her room first put Regina in her terrarium and then change out of her clothes from the day before and put on just like some sweatpants and a big baggy t-shirt. Uh, probably in changing, they'll notice the best friend necklace that she's still wearing and take that off. And also will probably notice the necklace and bracelet of Stephanie's. Mm-hmm. And they're just going to put her necklace with them and leave them there for now. And then she's going to kind of just start like walking through rooms to see if anyone's still at the house. And if they are, she's going to wake them up and kick them out. Yeah, there are a couple people still here. Um, 
you wake up kind of like not super early but um uh there are definitely like a bunch of people who like clearly like passed out here like uh, or just like you know fell asleep and didn't leave um uh so just like a couple of like you know uh just people that you like vaguely recognize from school and like a couple of like a couple of like the empty bedrooms um you go downstairs uh you go downstairs and um you see that there's like more people sort of like on like the couches and stuff that i mean there's only like 10 or 15 people still here um but you, you do you do notice that um the girl that you uh like dazed yesterday is still here Cora like I don't know if you know Cora very well I guess you know her name because you're both in the photography club she's still here uh like pass out on a couch um uh kind of like leaned up against like um some other girl that you vaguely recognize from like the track team and Sylvia's gonna walk up and like kick the couch and if they don't react then they're gonna just like do kind of like a heavy shove on one of their shoulders probably like Cora's shoulder the people on the couch like start to wake up and Cora and Alice like sort of you know get us like start to like groggily stand up and like shield their eyes from like the light coming in um and Alice is like um oh hey Sylvia uh great party last night yeah um party's over so like go home definitely totally for sure um uh core can you give me a ride and of course like yeah yeah for sure um core doesn't really look at you and the two of them just like start to leave so he's gonna make sure the rest of the people get out of the house yeah um, there is a huge fucking mess in your house um, because there was a party here last night and there are cups everywhere um, and there is there are like sticky parts of the floor where people spilled their drinks and um, it's a, it's a little gross. <laughs> Sylvia does not want to deal with this so they are going to go out and go next door to their like second cousin's house, Cheryl. And she's just gonna like open the door if it's unlocked and if it's locked, then. Yeah, unlocked. it's it's like you go through in through like the back door, it's unlocked. Um, you see that your um, cousin Cheryl is like um, sitting at like her table with like her phone and like a bowl of oatmeal and just is eating and like having a nice morning. Um, Sylvie's gonna go and just sit down at the table. He's like, so, Cheryl, uh, what are you gonna do today? Um, well, I have jazzercise at two. Oh, um, what have you, like, changed it up today? Do you need something? Yeah, the house is such a mess and I was just like, I don't want to deal with it. So do you want to go and clean it for me? Cheryl looks at you and says, Sylvia, I know it was your party. So? So don't you think you should show a little responsibility and clean up after yourself yeah that's why i'm getting you to do it <laughs> cheryl just sighs and says um when's her mom getting back Sunday night I think okay I'll call somebody and we'll get it cleaned up before then okay um, 
Thanks, Cheryl. Mm-hmm. Can I borrow your phone? Oh, where's yours? It's dead. So I want to use yours. Okay. She like slides her phone across the table. Thanks. Um, Sylvia is going to take it and dial 911. Uh, the, the, you like immediately like get dispatched. It's like 911, what's your emergency? Hi. So this is Sylvia's attempt at like mimicking Cheryl's voice <laughs> and not sounding like herself. Uh, there's a car that's been parked on the street in front of our house for quite a few days, and I think it's been abandoned. Can you <laughs> send a tow truck to come and get it? Is this my car? <laughs> yes, it is. No! <laughs> I told you Sylvia had plans. <laughs> um, There's like a beat, and... Then the dispatch says, um, I'm going to redirect you to the station. Uh, this is a line for emergencies only. Um, so in the future, don't use 911. Uh, and <laughs> Sorry, my name's Cheryl. <laughs> I was only doing this with Cheryl still in the room. <laughs> uh, you see that... <laughs> The, there's like just, just silence on the other end and then you hear like a click and then like 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 crackly static jazz plays as you get like transferred to a different like call uh you hear a woman pick up uh says hi this is francis this is a thorn red sheriff's office what can i do for you Car. There's a car parked in front of our house that's been there for a few days. So I think it's been abandoned. Can you come and tow it? Um, you hear like you can hear it through the phone how like loud the clacking of keys is as she's like typing, and then she goes, um, um, yeah. What's uh, the address? Uh, I don't know. One, two, three, 420 Cool Street. Yeah. <laughs> One, two, three, four, two, zero, Cool Street. <laughs> My name is Charles Thurciante. Um, <laughs> you hear Francis over the line just go. Um, absolutely Mr. Siante we'll get a tow driver over there as soon as possible though it might take a couple it might take an hour or two does Sylvia have any plans for the Saturday? Um, what does she do after Stephanie's car gets towed? I think for the rest of the Saturday she's just gonna like hang out in her room with Regina okay um so uh uh really quick we'll cut back we'll cut to eden um eden what do you do <laughs> what, do, what do you do with your saturday eden eden just has a normal saturday you know just kind of like vibing doing homework maybe waiting on <laughs> people to talk to him Oh, Eden. I was going to text Eden back in the morning. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, so Caesar, Caesar and um, Cassie, you both got texts from Eden the night before. Um, when do you reply to those? In the morning. Yeah, in the morning. What do you say? I believe the text to Cassie was like, hey, let me know if you're okay um something along those lines and like for caesar was like a if you need to talk i'm here caesar would have responded in the morning and then also seen the text from lucian in the morning and texted eden back and said yeah we should do lunch today 
and then to Lucian, he would see that and do like a question mark and then say question mark send 4 a.m question mark send and then he'll say i'll try to meet you there send illusion just quick responds really it's just like I would prefer this were private. Sorry for the late time. Send. See you there. <laughs> Send. Uh, Cassie will text Ethan back um, with a, like a thumbs up and then he'll say, I'm okay. Send. Um, are you free today? Send. Eden will text Caesar back and say <laughs> meet at the diner at like noon yeah he'll respond perfect Send. <laughs> and then Eden will text Cassie and say we should hang out tonight wherever you want Cassie sends like a uh uh, pretty quickly back so it sounds good send I think since it's probably like 10am at this point you didn't get some stuff done and then makes his way over to the diner meanwhile Stephanie you wake up uh, in the morning a little late she is not hungover because Stephanie Chaplin does not get hungover. She will get ready in the morning. She always will get ready um, before going down to breakfast or anything. And so she does notice that her eyes are still red. So she puts on a big pair of uh like big just like full like big sunglasses very like she's trying to have the like break like i'm mourning a breakup kind of look but she's also just like hiding it and um she's gonna express order a pair of because she has disposable money she's gonna express order a pair of like colored contacts trying to find like a pair of green colored contacts to that she can wear to make her eyes look normal stephanie is wearing like probably like black yoga pants like something like loungy but like athleisure kind of uh and a um her big sunglasses and a like white it's like a like a furry like like probably faux fur white like vest like uh like sweat shirt kind of thing with a big hood and she's gonna go downstairs is her mom up oh yeah your mom is up and she's at the table and she's got like she's got like her you know like little tablet in front of her and she's got like a glass of like you know juice that she's made herself and she looks up as you come downstairs and uh and she says good morning stephanie um i just got an interesting phone call what well um Mark from the um, Totra company um, called to let me know that he towed your car to the lot this morning. Fuck! (laughs) Of course, that's fucking perfect. Okay. Well, you should probably fucking know that Caleb and Caleb cheated on me with Sylvia, so I. Couldn't fucking stay there, and I was gonna ask you to get my car. And uh, Stephanie is going to like 
basically start to like put on a big show of crying and just like like flop down in a chair and just put her head in her head in her hands and just be like Aah! yeah your mom like at like when your mom was like talking to you she definitely was like oh my god i think like why like you are in trouble because your car got towed and this is going to be like a 200 dollar fee but as soon as you explain she just goes oh honey honey and she like goes and gives you like a big hug and like pats your shoulder and like strokes your hair and she says oh god I'm so sorry (sighs) terrible you know can we get my car is it yeah yeah we can get your car um it's it's just you know it's down at the lot um you know I'm friends with Mark and, you know, I'm friends with his wife and, you know, I'm sure we can get it for a bit like a family discount. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Do you want to go out for dinner and get some ice cream or something? Mm, Maybe. Yeah. Can we go out tonight? I don't want to. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. You know what? We can get your car and then I'll swing by the grocery store and I'll pick up your favorite ice cream and a movie. Yeah. I want to watch like... (laughs) I just never thought he would cheat on me! Oh, honey, it's okay. Was I stupid for not seeing it coming? No, no, of course not. I mean, here's the thing, sweetheart. A lot of men, uh, especially especially the good looking ones, um, turn out to be assholes at the end of the day. And... Um, There's not a lot you can do about that except figure it out as it comes. And um, And you were right about Sylvia, too. I thought she was my friend. uh, She just, like, gives you another hug and, like, pats your back and says, "Um, I know, I know. (sighs) Sometimes... One of the hardest lessons to learn about the world is that um, girls do not always support girls. And uh, it's hard, you know? I've lost a lot of friends. Sometimes they come and go, but you know, it, it hurts at first, but it's always an opportunity to find someone better. Stephanie's not really listening to what her mom's saying. (laughs) But she does like nod at that and goes, and kind of like does a big dramatic sniff and just goes, I don't know what I'm going to do about prom. Oh, man. Oh, you know, here's what I'll say. I, I think that you can probably find someone to go with. But if you don't, you know, I never went to prom, so. Why didn't you go to prom? Here's something to note about your mom, Stephanie, is she doesn't talk about high school. Um, she actually like really doesn't talk about her childhood at all. Um, and so when you ask that, your mom just says, um, yeah, I, I just never thought that it was, you know, important, but... Prom is the most important part of high school. I would probably say that uh, graduating is probably the most important part of high school. Um, Okay, after that. But, you know, I'm glad that it's so important to you. And I, you know, want to make sure that... I want you to be able to enjoy it, if that's what you want. 
Thank you, mommy. Yeah. And I am going to call Caleb Gray's mother because that is unacceptable. And I know, I know for a fact that Beth Gray raised her son better than that. So I'm going to give her a call. Stephanie nods. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I don't know how he's going to show his face at school on Monday. Well, I think that whatever happens, that kind of behavior, that kind of, it's not acceptable. It's not acceptable, Stephanie, and you should never tolerate that from a man, okay? I know. I dumped his ass in front of everyone, so. I'm glad. Good. Um, should we go get your car? Yes, please. And she drives you to the, the auto lot where um, your car is like sitting like right inside like the big chain link fence. Um, and your mom goes over to like the little building um, with her purse to like go talk to uh, the guy because it's like Mark's towing company. And um, uh, she comes out like 15 minutes later with um, your keys and uh, gives them to you and says, um, okay, everything's sorted out. So you can go in, get your car and drive it home. Okay? Okay. Um... Can I, I actually have uh, something I need to go do for, there's like a, a, a book that I need from the library for research, for a research project. Okay. I'm gonna go pick that up and then I'll be home, okay? Okay, yeah, go ahead. Um, uh, just text me if you need anything. Um, if there's anything else you want while I'm out at the grocery store. She's going to give her mom an extra hug before she goes, which is kind of for show, but also because it was nice earlier when her mom gave her a hug. Yeah, your mom hugs you back. Um, and, you know, and, you know, as you're leaving, she says, um, I'm always here for you, for whatever you need, and I love you, and you are better than any of those boys at that high school, okay? You will let me, like, if there's one who does ask me to prom, like, that's still okay to go out with, like, if someone does ask me to prom, right? Yeah, of course. Okay. Okay, I'll see you soon. Alrighty, bye, sweetheart. And she gets back in her car and drives away. And Stephanie is going to go to the address that she wrote down last night for the local magic shop. Meanwhile, um, what do, uh, what's Lucian, Starfire, and Cassie up to today? I need to get out of the house. So I'm going to, does Cora have a, Cora's got a car, right? Yeah. Can I call Cora? Yeah. You call Cora. Yeah. Um, she picks up after like the second ring and is like, uh, hey man, what's up? Uh, hi, um, are you doing anything today? No, nursing a hangover, I guess. Same. Do you want to do that together? Sure. Can we go to Susie's kitchen? <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah, dude. Great. Um, so, uh, uh, the, the true love of my life, Blondie, is um, in uh, purgatory at the moment. So, um, Holy shit, did somebody finally take a crowbar to that thing? <sighs> or why would you say that to me? Um, no she's just you know she's 
she's going through a rough time right now, but I think, you know, she'll, she'll make it out the other side if she, if she puts her heart into it. Uh, what I'm saying is, uh, Cora, I really need a fucking ride to that diner. Okay. Yeah, dude, chill. I'll be there in like a second. I have to drop, uh, my brother off at like his swim lesson. Um, but I'll be there in like 15. Uh, awesome. Thanks. And then hangs up and then, um, gets dressed in um oh god what is what does lucian astor get dressed in today you know what fuck it he's probably putting on a brave face um uh he probably well because he's probably gonna pass his dad down fair fuck okay so then he's gonna get dressed in like probably one of the grosser more straight man suits that he has more it let's it's it's less good than everything else that he usually wears but he's got a he's trying to deceived his father so it's gonna look bad um but in his uh he's probably gonna take like a, a his messenger bag thing with him and he's uh gonna stuff like a nicer clothes <laughs> but he's gonna walk out looking looking sort of like you know lucian astor son of arthur astor yeah you leave the house you do not encounter your father on the way out um but you do hear uh the sound of um like talking from behind the door of his study can i mm-hmm. can i can i roll something to listen in yeah roll the gaze into the abyss that's what cold right you said dark oh oh uh also still not good and i don't have any strings on this fucker no it's a three or no four um, sorry yeah, it's uh, muffled. Too muffled for you to hear. Q, I'll mark experience. Um, yep. And then I will run, run, run out that door. <laughs> cool. You run out the door. You see that Cora pulls up uh, in her, you know, little Subaru hatchback. Uh, you see the uh, sibling that you recognize, um, but like don't know very well, cause, like in middle school, is in the back. Um, uh, Percy, who's like small, like skinny pale freckled kid with like like unruly curly red hair um in the back of like a backpack and uh she like swings open the passenger door for you as you uh walk up uh he'll get in um then he probably like turns around and, is, and like holds out his hand and is like hi i'm lucian astor what's your name uh percy and also i know you does he, he just waits to shake his hand or not? No, he just <laughs> stares at you. Lucian takes his hand back and is like, cool. Um, you said that the, the car is um, very well kept. There's like a um, like a turtle shell like dash. Um, it's a 2003 Subaru Outback. Um, and uh, uh, but hanging from the uh, rear view mirror is a rosary. Um, and yeah, uh, Cora puts the car in reverse, pulls out of the driveway. And um, they, you guys like head to like the local gym where she just like pulls up to the door and drops Percy off and is like, I'll be back in an hour and a half um, if you need a ride and I'm busy, uh, I'll text you and you should call mom. Percy's just like whatever bye once once the door closes and he walks away I think Lucian's just gonna like turn the corner and be like your brother's a shithead I I yeah he is I don't know it's a 13 year olds you know yeah I'm so hungry yeah diner diner the two of you pull away and head for um Susie's kitchen starfire uh, what are you up to this morning? Starfire spends most of the morning pulling out the quasi-conspiracy board slash pieces of paper that she probably tucked away in her dresser and pulls out another couple of pieces of paper, adds Stephanie's name to one, pins that somewhere, draws the Orboros symbol, gets a red pin, pins that somewhere, and kind of just updates things, messes with things. And then we'll eventually put all the papers away, pull out her phone and see if she has any text messages. Uh, And then if she doesn't, she will open the text messages, 
to the chosen squad and be like, Hey, you guys doing anything today? Uh, Cassie will reply, be like meeting Eden tonight. Other than that, I'm free. Son. Uh, Lucian will respond with like getting breakfast on my own. If that's chill, do you need me? Uh, no, all good. And then let me know if you want to hang out later, probably to the whole chat. Lucian just sends cool, period. Okay. Uh, Starfire will put away her phone unless anyone has other ideas uh, and will walk downstairs to the training room in the basement of the Miller's house. You walk down. Uh, it's currently empty. Um, there's a punching bag hanging from the ceiling, glass case that is empty, um, some mats in a corner, some hooks where like, you know, gloves and like wraps for like your hands are, are sitting there and like, you know, training gear. Uh, Starfire will take off the chain for probably the first time in a while and just fight with her fists. Uh, go at the punching bag for a good long time with many, many well-practiced, memorized patterns and combinations, like clockwork. You're down there for about an hour when you hear someone, like the wooden stairs creak as someone comes down. And, um, you see that your sister, Carolyn, is um, like leaned up against uh, like the wooden post at the bottom of the steps watching you. Starfire's breathing pretty hard in like a tank top or whatever, and hair's partially down across her face, fell out halfway through. Does not turn her back to look at her sister, but feels her standing there and says, you need something? Just waiting for my turn. Have at it. I will take two steps back and like hold out my hands, gesturing towards the punching bag, like go for it. Yeah, she starts wrapping her fists and looks over at the chain. I hold out my hand. And it, like, rises up, wraps around the Starfire's scene. Her eyes follow it, and it's not a flinch, but, like, a wince. She turns and hits the punching bag so fucking hard, and it starts swinging. She steadies it. Hits it again. Are you going to watch me or? Did you want me to? I thought I was supposed to stay out of your way. Well, if you're going to be down here, there's other things I could punch. Sure. All right. Carolyn is um, like maybe slightly taller than uh, Starfire with like long... um, brown hair not dyed that's like tied back with like a simple like black uh, ponytail um she's got like a few freckles on her face um they're kind of faint and um she isn't is in like you know like a black tight t-shirt and like uh some athletic shorts and um she's older she's like in her um it's like a year or two older than Starfire. Um, and uh, kind of has a perpetual scowl on her face. Starfire squares up into fighting stance. We'll take off the chain again. So that's not fair. And we'll hold up her fists. Yeah, she gets into her own stance. 
um, very similar to yours. You're taught by the same people and um, starts kind of circling you. Starfire is usually on offense. Today she's playing defense. Your sister like circles you sort of waiting and then swings and throws the first punch like right at your side. Am I able to block or is this a rolls type thing? No, you can you can block it. Okay. If yeah. you want. Yeah. Yeah, I'll absolutely block. Yeah. You block and she grabs like your wrist and like tries to like twist you uh, around to like and try and like throw you on the ground and like pin you to the mat. What do you do? Mm, I think I'll do the fight move that like where you twist your arm the opposite direction to like contort their arms so they let go of you. Mm-hmm. And then probably try to go for some sort of kick because that'll probably make her side exposed. Yeah, go ahead and roll to lash out physically. Okay. Uh, that's a six, but I have a plus three volatile, so nine. Um, so on a seven to nine, you harm them, but choose one. They learn something about your true nature and gain a string on you. I decide how bad the harm turns out or you become your darkest self. Uh, you can decide how bad the harm turns out. You kick at your sister's side and she lets go, sort of stumbles back a little bit. And I think that in this moment where you're, the two of you are sparring, you hurt her more than maybe you intended. And you see that she kind of like scowls and like tries to shove down the pain and just says, and like clutches her hand to her side and goes, <laughs> yeah, I guess you're not holding back anymore. Sloppy defense. Yeah. Well. <sighs> That's why I'm not the chosen. I don't think it is. She's not leaving, uh, but she does look a little too um, like stunned, kind of like out of breath to like swing at you again. So she's just standing there panting and says, well, (sighs) want to take another swing? Are we done? You tapping? It is incredibly clear to me that um, I can't fight battles that I'm gonna lose, or I shouldn't anyway. Yeah, you're one to talk. I'll drop my fight students. Room's yours, have at it. Thanks. I appreciate it, given this is the only fucking thing I'll ever fight. You know, there's nothing stopping you. There is nothing stopping you. You could come with me. She looks down at the chain where you left it. And she looks back at you and she says, no fucking way. Well, that seems like your choice and not my problem. Whenever you're ready to actually help, let me know. But otherwise, stop fucking sulking and making it my problem, okay? Making it your problem? Yeah. You made it my problem. You... No, actually, Carolyn, I didn't do jack shit. I am so sorry that you get to have a rest of your life and you don't have to deal with this anymore. Rest of my life? Yeah. Rest of my life? Uh Uh-huh. What is my life? I don't know, but I'm so glad that you get to decide that. Have fun with that. Don't fucking waste it, okay? Stop wasting it. I don't get a life because that was my life and you stole it from me. I didn't steal it. It is not my fault. I didn't do anything, Carolyn. It is just my problem now. 
I didn't choose it and I never get to choose against it ever. You get a choice, make one. She stands there, grimaces. Well, since it's your fucking problem, I suggest you fucking deal with it. I'm working on it, okay? You know what? When I was younger, I really wanted to be a fucking acrobat. I wanted to go in the circus and travel places and do weird shit and entertain people. And I have no fucking idea. Then for a while after that, I wanted to be a teacher. I would have been a terrible fucking teacher, but I thought I could do a better job than some of the teachers at school. So I was like, ah, I'll be a teacher. Then for a while, I wanted to be a marine biologist. And here's the thing. I never had to give any of that up until this. And guess what? Go be an acrobat, be a teacher, be a marine biologist, be whatever the fuck you want to be. Okay. Do you know what I want to be? I know. Yeah. And I can't fucking have it. I'm so sorry that you don't get to throw your life away for the sake of some fucking stupid prophecy, Carolyn. Thank you so much for helping me with that for sharing all of the years and years of knowledge and training that you have instead of just deciding that you're going to sit there and watch as I get the shit kicked out of me by random things and try and figure out what the hell is happening. Super appreciate it. It's been great. Yeah, well, maybe I just can't stand to watch you fail. Maybe you can't stand to watch me be anything better than you. Yeah, I guess we'll fucking find out. Yeah, we will. She turns back to the punching bag. Thanks for being such a good sister. She doesn't answer. I leave. And I text Cassie. Any new reports on the police scanner? I don't, I don't know. I think Cassie spent the entire morning hiding in her room, probably with the police scanner on. Um, would there be anything? Yeah, uh, you, you would like heard some, some report about like hikers spotting like some weird people in the woods and, you know, sending a cot, like a squad car to go check it out. Um, Sounds like your kind of thing. Could be. Yeah, Cassie relays that to Starfire, like reports of weird people around insert location here. Um, Want to check it out? Send. Hell yeah, send. Yeah, so I guess like meanwhile, we cut over to Susie's kitchen. Uh, cozy little diner um it's a bustling on this saturday morning is uh the folks of thorn ridge are all going to get brunch lunch uh, at uh everybody's favorite comfort food spot um uh lucian and you and Sakura managed to like snag a booth um uh and you probably get there like just before like you probably are sliding into like you know leather seats um as uh caesar and eden walk in oh i meant to i meant to say really quick right before that lucian would have changed in the car um Mm -hmm. back into his his usual and it would have been really funny because he would have just started taking off his shirt and then (laughs) Course, like jesus dude dude what do, i'm getting your arm with your arm i can't wear this shit into the fucking diner pam's gonna be there god the 25 year old the 25 year old woman we have a connection who... okay we have a connection <laughs> like do you like for real no fucking course we don't it's in my dreams <laughs> okay anyways <laughs> he gets dressed he walks in <laughs> Yeah, uh, 
Him, also something I should have mentioned, I guess like at, during like the night, she wouldn't have been in her roller skates, but now that it's like busy, Pam has roller skates on, like her little waitress uniform. Um, and she's like skating around the diner, uh, taking orders and everything. Um, and uh, as Eden and Caesar walk in, Pam uh, like points you guys to like an empty table towards the back. There's also like some space at like the counter. Um, this is like a very old fashioned diner. Um, so there's like a counter where people can also sit, but uh, looks like it's kind of getting full. Yeah, so we'll take that table. <clears throat> cool. Um, there's a very awkward moment where the four of you see each other. I'm gonna wave like friendly, like it's fine, you know? Yeah, Cora waves back at Caesar and is like, hey. I don't know either of these people. <laughs> Eden doesn't know either of these people well enough. Yeah, I'll be like, this is Cora. Uh, she's vice president of the student council. She's great. Lucian's just gonna like play, maybe play up the fact that he's hungover. He's definitely not that hungover, but he's just gonna be like, yeah, m- m- morning. And this is Lucian. Aster. Yeah, I, I know, I, yeah, hi, I know, I know Lucian, you're, you're friends with Cassie. Uh, yeah. Cassie's my best friend, yep. Mm-hmm. Whoa, the energy here is pretty <laughs> crazy. <laughs> um. Don't, don't want to bother y'all too much. Yeah, we had our own thing. Y'all seem to be, uh, having a moment together. Uh, no, we're not, actually. We are not having a moment at all. That's really I don't weird. think we've ever had a moment. That's not... Literally, not, no. This is, never. We have never... We, there is zero anything happening yeah. in, in the... Honestly, between. like, negative. Like, You're negative, making... Negative like, if we look at the numbers, happen. it's like we're like... It's actually a negative imaginary number with the amount of not anything that is happening between us. You, yeah. you guys are hurting your case at this point. <laughs> Eden just walks <laughs> to, to their <laughs> table. <laughs> I think Lucian just turns to Corn's like, are we never gonna escape this? Everywhere we go, this is so our entire lives. This is so fucked up. I swear We look not. like a couple, we don't look We like can't, no. Look it's... at me. Look, look at you. Look at me. <laughs> yeah. Caesar's just standing here. Um... Yeah, can, I was gonna say, can I say I went after yeah. with Eden? Yeah. I did not want to be standing there for that conversation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Caesar walks away, Lucian's just like, have a good morning, Caesar. He'll turn around and be like, "Yeah, you too, Lucian." Lucian just like full head on head on table, just like groaning in front of Cora. Yeah, Cora just like takes a sip of like her iced tea and is like, "Okay, dude, what the fuck was that? You got to tell me what's going on." Because like, sorry, I am like, isn't that isn't that the person dating your ex? Oh. Yeah, no. Your Eden best is... friend who is your ex. Yeah, I, that one. Um, cool. Yeah, no, so, mm-hmm, Eden, I don't know why they're getting breakfast together. I think it might just be another, um, God hates me, uh, yet again. So, um. Wow, strong. It's pretty bad. Yeah, cause, um. What's, what's the fucking deal with Caesar? He's nice. I'm like 90% sure that he called to check up on me last night, but I can't really remember because it was getting hazy at the end. Yeah, no, he's, um, he's nice. Um, he sort of like whispers into his pants so she can't hear the last part. We've been hooking up. <laughs> You've been what? What was that? No, we, it's, we, we huh? been hooking up. We. Wow. And then, <laughs> no, we, you, you know. Fuck it, I don't even give a shit anymore. We've been, we've been, um, I'm, uh, Caesar and I are, um, you know, we're, um, why am I saying this? No, <sighs> please, know, please continue. This is crazy. Cora, Cora, I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm on the edge of a lot of things. Okay. Um, and, yeah, I've been hooking up with Caesar. I've been hooking up with Caesar for a long time. Oh point. my god! <laughs> Dude, uh, why the fuck have you not told me before? Well, 
Um, because to be honest, the only person I ever told was, um, oh, you're gonna hate me so much. The only person I ever told was, like, Father Thomas. Um, oh my god, no. Like, when? Like, in confession? Lucia just... There's no milkshakes yet, so we can't do anything. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I guess it's like the best place to tell him, but like, dude. Oh, Father Tom is that poor man. Like, it's not just you. It's like it's me. It's like every, probably everyone in this town. Wait, do you go to confession? I thought you weren't Catholic. I feel like I do sometimes. My mom gets like, I ha I mean, I go to mass, so I have to take communion, so I have to go to confession. Well, what the fuck do you do in confession? I'm a I'm a lesbian and I'm not sorry. Like, what's the <laughs> Uh, she laughs and she's like, no, fuck no. I don't apologize for being gay. Because fuck that. Usually it's just like, um, I don't know. I lied to my mom. I lied to my friends. That's, that's usually it. I don't know. I was mean to my brother. Wow. You lie to your mom and your friends? That's crazy. Yeah, I know. I'm like so fucking terrible. I'm gonna go to hell, man. Yeah, you're like the most de like morally depraved person that I know. You're just in the depths of. I have a question. How many? <laughs> How many prayers does Father Tom give you for being gay? You know, it's, it's, he's gotten. I think he's giving up. Maybe <laughs> at this point. I think he's starting. I think I'm wearing him down. Um, because the shit. I mean, that's not even the worst of it. That he hears. I think I might be giving um, Father Thomas some some real trauma. And if, if, oh, he, if he leaves the, the diocese, it might be my fault. Um, but you know, it's it's his calling. He decided, yeah, yeah. to be a, a priest. also. I mean, like, come on, he's like the priest of like Thornridge. He's got to hear he's some crazy shit. Crazy. I can't even imagine what. Well, um. Anyways, I'm um. Does, is Pam over yet? <laughs> Do you order food? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pam's just like, Pam skates up. Af uh, Pam goes to the Caesar and Eden first because they look more normal. Like they're having like a more normal time <laughs> to like get your order. And then she skates over to um, Lucian and Cora and is like, uh, what can I get you? Oh God, Pam, it is so good to see you. You don't understand mm -hmm. how good it is to see you. Okay. Um, could I get um, a strawberry milkshake and like steak tips and fries, please? Yep. She scribbles down and like turns to Cora and Cora orders like a burger, um, like I guess medium well and uh, a chocolate milkshake and ham skates away. Meanwhile, what's happened at the Caesar Eden table? What's going on there? What are the vibes? Eden sits down first, turns to Caesar, and then just raises an eyebrow. Caesar knows what it's about. What? Lucy? That was a normal conversation. He, I, we're in French together and other stuff. All right. I did want to know what, what happened last night with Caleb? You know, um, they broke up. I went after him. I feel bad. Yeah. Wait, bad for who? For Caleb? Okay, good. That's the correct person. Yes. <laughs> it's kind of my fault, though. Is it? I mean, I was the one who went up to him and, like, asked him to go stop Stephanie. And then that cold shit happened. Okay, that was a domino effect, but... You know, I think things were not destined to go good. There's, you know, there's not a good match. You know, Caleb's really nice. Stephanie is Stephanie. 
Yeah, that's true. I mean, I do know. Never mind. What what happened? No, 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 no. Wait, 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 you know what? You know what? You can't never mind that. Oh, come on. You going after Caleb there? You... Listen, I'm not judging. No, I know. The hottie on the football team, I get it. Um... <laughs> wow, I feel really called out. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> if you knew, why didn't you say anything? I mean, like, you weren't ready to talk about it, and, like, it's not hard to pick up on it. <laughs> from me or from him? From you. Well, yeah. I... She's very closed off. Yeah, I know. I also just, like, don't talk to him. <laughs> Those football guys aren't really, uh, my type. Most of them suck. Caleb's really nice, though. It doesn't matter. It, no, he, yeah. I trust you. Yeah, um... Things were kind of weird between us, and then we talked, and now it's... Fine. Caleb's kind of fucked, though. I was gonna ask you, could you do anything about that? Uh... I think I owe him a favor anyways, so I will, I will, I'll try my best. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, that makes me feel better. Did you two just, did you two leave together? No. No. Because I, like, I didn't see you at all. Yeah, I'm sorry, I should have texted you. Things went crazy. I don't know if a crowded diner is the best place to tell you about what happened. You could, you could text me. Yeah, I was, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll text you and Caesar will text. There are, as far as I know, Zombies, werewolves, and snake people, said. And then add, I was attacked by a zombie in the woods, said. Eden is very shocked. It goes to say something, but then, like, doesn't. And then says, I know about the werewolves, but what the fuck? Zombies? You knew about the werewolves? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Sen. Eden says, well, werewolves are human at least. <laughs> Sometimes. Out loud, Caesar would be like, yeah, I know. I know. I. There's a lot actually around. Fuck. But the you, other thing. And... You, you got. Yes. And Caesar will. Because I. Caesar's like wearing like a sweater i think at this point and he's gonna like roll up his sleeve like a little bit just to like show eden where like there's like bruises like on his like arm i think where he was grabbed yeah it looks like um it kind of looks like uh uh it look kind of looks like almost like a burn but like from cold instead of heat i mean it doesn't look bad yeah i'm like fine i guess you sure you're good? Yeah, I'm always good. I mean, I'm glad it didn't kill you, but... Yeah, me too. How did you get out? Werewolves. Do you know who? The Handlers. Oh. I... Did you know... Luna hates... Cassie? No, no. Well, she does. Why would Luna hate Cassie? 
I think we should talk to Cassie about that. I don't have any loyalty to Cassie, but I have loyalty to you. So I'll let you know. It's probably not a good idea to have a werewolf that is out for you. Yeah. Meanwhile, um, Lucian, you get the text from Starfire about a potential incursion in the woods. Oh god, I think Lucian's in the middle of eating his steak tips and I was like, shit. He texts back, are you guys going, like, right now? (laughs) Question mark, question mark, question mark. I can drive maybe half an hour. Lucian sends back, cool, you, we driving blondie, question mark? I still have the keys. Fuck no, how are you supposed to get me the keys? I I got a car, I'll come get you. <sighs> okay, Lucian, uh, she said, he texts, says, I'm at Susie's, send. Are you doing okay? I'm doing fine. I'm actually, uh, I'm doing okay. I actually brought up, well, okay, I have a question for you. And Cora, like, sort of like elbows on the table and like leans forward okay what the fuck is the deal with starfire <laughs> lucian smiles the widest he's smiled in about in weeks and it's just like <sighs> leans in okay so here's the deal um starfire is also a lesbian or at least that's the label that starfire is using for now um very much into you okay is she though Oh, no, for sure. Oh, it's just, okay, okay, okay. Here's the deal with Starfire. And then he is like, okay, so here's the deal with Starfire. She's just, all of her emotions sort of live like re, like in a tiny, tiny little box buried deep within her, right? She doesn't open this box um, ever. Uh, I think I've seen her open it a couple times. But there was, it was like in like, when we were in like mortal peril. Um, Mortal peril? <laughs> Jokes. <laughs> um, but, so, you know, it's high school, it's mortal peril. Everything is like, oh, uh, crazy high school. So, like that. Uh huh. Okay, um, sure, whatever. She's, but so she's very much into you. It's just that she's like so bad at like, I mean, this is like glass houses because I'm not saying I'm any better at this, but like, the, the, the honest, the, like, being honest with, like, a crush is just not, not, it's, it's hard. I tease her constantly about this, um, but, but my, my advice to you, my very good friend, you know, I consider you quite like a sister to me, fucking go for it. I say, I say, I say, I say, go for it. I think, I think, I think if, if things, if the world, Starfire needs, Starfire's world is very tumultuous and full of fate and destiny and grand quests and purpose. I think she needs someone to give a little bit of a fuck you to destiny every now and then. And that's all I'm gonna say. So. Also, she's very much into you. She keeps avoiding me whenever I talk to um, her about you, so. Aura goes on a little face journey <laughs> um, of many emotions, but um, she says, uh, I mean, I'll f- think about it. Um, she, like, didn't offer to take me to prom, but, like, what? as a, th- but, like, as a thing, it was, but no, okay, but it was, like, because Stephanie like said something to me about it. She was like, well, tell Stephanie that I'm taking you to prom if she's an asshole to you again. And I was like, are you asking me to prom? And she was like, well, no, but because if I was going to ask you to prom, I'd do it better, like when you're, and I was like, what does that mean? God, we're useless. We're fucking useless. I mean, like, honestly, maybe it's just, like, for the best, you know? No! Uh, Cora! Cora, and I think he, like, takes Cora's, like, hands at this point. He's like, Cora, you deserve to have a good prom, okay? 
out of fucking everybody at this godforsaken school, you deserve a good prom. Okay? So, hey, um, I, uh, I don't think I'm gonna get a date, um, prom anytime soon. So, um, you know, I'd hold, I'd, I'd keep going after the stock I think, but if you want a lame backup date with a really nice car, I'm here. Not as like a date date, because that's, you know, we've established. Yeah, I mean, I know, yeah. Yeah. Well, my parents did pay to offer to pay for my outfit. So. That's all I'm saying. Okay, well. <sighs> wish I could. Never mind. What? Well, he's just like prom outfits. I'm like. I don't know. I'm. No, this is stupid. This is, this is stupid. No, no, go ahead, please. No, we should no, continue. it's stupid. No, what's stupid? stupid? What's stupid? It's not fucking stupid. What's stupid? I what? Why are you saying? I, know, I was just like I was like looking at like. I don't know, cause like, it's like. Cassie was like looking at like dresses like online for like things, and it was like I don't know, it's stupid. I'm not. I'm not mm, wrong. Stupid. Never mind. We're moving away from this point wait, in the wait, conversation. Wait, wait. Okay. I'm gonna propose something to you, a plan, an idea, if you will. Okay. <laughs> Would your dad fund a tux for you? Like a nice one, like a tailored one? Yeah. Okay, okay. Hypothetical. You get a tux for prom that fits me. I get a dress for prom that fits you. I don't know, think about it. Lucian Aster takes a deep breath. <sighs> Sticks his hand out. <laughs> Spits in his hand. Deal. Ugh, gross, gross. Wipe your fucking hand off. Gross. I'm not gonna wipe my fucking hand. <laughs> I'm not gonna shake your hand then. This is nasty. Oh, fuck you, Cora. What the fuck? <laughs> I, we, I thought we were, I thought we were, I thought this was... <laughs> Literally, that's the grossest thing that you've done today. This is uh, it's archaic, even. I, th fine. I thought I thought we were. Ha I thought I thought this was you know a thing maybe a thing. But you know, fine, fine. You can we can we can ignore it. It's fine. it's fine. Give me your other hand. <laughs> it's not his other. Hand. <laughs> she shakes the hand that doesn't have spit in it. <laughs> but then Lucian's like, okay, but if you're gonna get a dress for me, you have to get like a. Like, can I give you money for? I want like a nice. I want like a nice, like a nice dress. Okay. I... Well, listen. My mom said that she'd get me whatever I wanted as long as it was a dress. Fuck. Okay. Well, this has pushed up the timetables of some things a little bit, um, because uh, I there's no way I can go to prominent dress with my dad alive. So, um, yeah. No, I'm good. I'm. <laughs> Um, okay, I just, I feel like I really should stop pressing you for, for answers. I feel like this yeah, is the point where gonna, I need to stop knowing things. Yeah, you things. know, hey, you know, we, we'll all, you know, we'll text about what kind of Well, maybe and don't leave dress. a paper, oh, okay, yeah, text me about that. Don't leave a paper trail for, like, whatever you're doing. Um, no, actually, I wouldn't don't tell text, me about it. I'm yeah, not going to no. text you or tell you about it. Cool, yeah, keep me out of the loop. Okay, what's your favorite color? Uh, I don't know, green. Cool. You guys keep chatting for a while, and then eventually uh, you head out. So meanwhile, we'll cut back over to Stephanie, like a little bit before this. Where are you going? She's going to the Illumination Emporium, and she's thinking about a lot while she's driving and formulating a plan. And once she parks the car before she goes inside, she's just gonna send a quick text to Caesar. She's just gonna ask, hey, do you have Lucian's phone number? Caesar will text back and be like, tell us why, send. And then send, uh, I thought you hated him, question mark, send. She's gonna say, um, I mean, I do hate him, but I just have to talk to him about something. Yeah, okay. He will send Lucian's number. 
and he's gonna be like hope it goes well exclamation point send talk to me if you need anything send she sends back um you know i will then she's just going to unbuckle her seatbelt and go inside the store yeah, so the Illumination Emporium is um, this tiny little shop, like, sandwiched between, it's, like, a little bit off Main Street, like, um, but uh, in, in still in, like, you know, one of those, like, big, um, like, block stores with, like, the, the facades on the front. Um, it's uh, squeezed between, like, a little travel agency office and an antique store um, on the corner. Uh, it has, like, these big glass windows that are obscured by hanging tapestries and um there are like some flyers pasted to the glass uh advertising like local events piano lessons meditation classes there's like a flyer for a garage rock concert uh saturday night called uh for a band called godfather death uh but you step inside like pull uh, the door open um there's a bead curtain over the door that you have to push through uh to get in um inside uh it like immediately hits you like warm air and the smell of incense stephanie got a coffee an iced coffee from that one place on the on her drive so she's walking in sunglasses still on her purse holding her coffee um and it's just gonna kind of wander around looking at things yeah, um, so the walls here are like lined with shelves and there's like a middle sort of rack, uh, there's like a middle row of like racks and stands, um, all full to the brim of like crystals, new age books about like meditation and yoga and mindfulness. Um, there's like candles, like carved figurines, tarot decks, boxes of incense, um, like rows of like these little bottles of essential oils and like body salts. Um, there's like a rack with like scarves and shawls like handmade um, draped over it um, they're like handmade tapestries hung up on the wall for sale um, also like hanging from the ceiling are like these big bundles of like herb and there's a sign that says like all the herbs are harvested from Penny's own garden and then below that like a note that says um, that uh, this store does not sell white sage um, in the back against the wall, there's a counter with a glass case full of jewelry. Um, and behind it is an older woman, her late 60s, um, like wrinkles at the corners of her eyes and mouth, um, short, fat, um, long gray hair and like a crown braid. Um, and uh, she has these big purple cat eye glasses. Um, and uh, she's like these big green teardrop shaped earrings uh, that match her like green overall dress that she's like wearing over like a tan sort of turtleneck. Um, and there's a big blue butterfly brooch pinned to like the one of the overall straps. It's just like a little name tag that says Penny. Stephanie's gonna do that thing where she uh, is looking at stuff to be polite, but clearly isn't interested in any of the things here. Mm -hmm. Just kind of browsing. Uh, you hear like a, a like voice clear, a th like throat clears behind you and you see that um, <clears throat> Penny is there. And she goes, <clears throat> hi, uh, can I help you? Yeah, um, actually I was wondering if, uh, do you have any, uh, books on witchcraft? Uh, she looks at you and, um, says, um, yeah, what kind of, uh, books are you looking for? Well, I'm specifically, I'm looking for protection. Maybe some if you just have anything maybe written down. She nods and then looks at you and you, you have like these big sunglasses on so she can't really like, it doesn't seem like she like knows 
who who you are at first and then sort of like recognition like dawns on her face and she goes oh stephanie um yeah have i ever met this woman before nope sorry do i know you oh um well we haven't officially met um but i've get, i've sort of been waiting for you to wander in here <laughs> sorry what does that mean oh here um i keep all the good books in the back okay um she leads you to the so behind like next to the the counter there's sort of like this curtained off door doorway um that she like pulls back and um so there's just like a tiny room behind uh behind it that's got like all these like big drapes and artwork on the walls and um there's like a small card table like covered in a cloth and um like two chairs because they this store also offers like tarot readings um but against like the back wall is um a big uh bookshelf that's like sagging under like the weight of the books on it and like all of them are these like old like cracked leather covered tomes seeing those stephanie smiles and goes so are these things for sale well um Yes and no. Um, well, let me introduce myself officially. I'm Penelope Grimm, and I am Thornbridge's resident witch. So, I, mm, I I don't like to you know give myself too many airs or anything, but um, I am sort of the collector of magic and items in this town. And um, when I sell them to people, it uh, comes with a clause. So they are for sale, but only if, um, only if you agree to the rules um, of magic. What are the rules? See, <laughs> this is why I was waiting for you to come in, because I know that um, with the internet and all these you know, newfangled technology, you know, young witches don't learn the rules like they used to. Um, well, the one rule, really. All energy that you put into the world comes back to you eventually. So when you do magic, less powerful things like small hexes and uh, spells, mm, the consequences don't, they, they, you don't even notice them really sometimes. Um, big things, big spells come back and bite you always. Um, I was young. I used Young Witch one day and oh God, all those girls I used to curse back in the day. Um, but you learn, I learned the hard way. Um, things you put into the universe come back to you. And that's why when I sell magic to people, we agree that um we keep the energy we're putting out on the neutral to good side of things you say that you're thornridge's resident witch i'm assuming that's a title that was either passed down to you or did you claim it yourself a little bit of both well, maybe the rules should change. Can I roll to shut her down? Sure. That's a six. 
30 market experience um so that penny is not really phased by that and just sort of like smile sweetly and says um well you can certainly try and change the rules um and you can certainly try and do bad things but um this is a thing that you'll learn and i hope that it doesn't learn you don't learn through doing um but when you cast magic that hurts other people, um, it always comes back and hurts you. God, you're so pretentious. <laughs> Condescending much? What is this little sweet grandmother attitude? If you're a head witch, you're trying to put me in my place, fucking put me in my place. Is that what you want? Her face just like, no smile. I lower my sunglasses and stare at her. I'm a motherfucking witch. I'm a motherfucking bitch. I'm both. <laughs> I know I'm awful. And I'm getting more powerful with each passing day. So if you want to show me what you can do, I'll gladly take that lesson. And then next time, I'll be the one to put you in your place. She just sighs and says, oh, Stephanie, do you want a tarot reading? What would that do? How would that help me? I already know what I am. Tarot readings don't tell you what you are, but they offer guidance, paths forward. Sure. Do your worst, Grandma. She gestures to the, the table and says, um, like, for you to sit down. Stephanie will sit. Uh, gets a um, uh, velvet bag from a shelf in the room and uh, pulls out this beautiful deck of tarot cards with thick, like thick, heavy cards, like hand, and you can see that they're hand painted. And she says, as she starts to like um, get them out and like put the bag down, she hands them to you and says, um, Quite frank, um, I don't really feel inclined to sell you any of my books today, but um, maybe the cards will sway me. Let's see if they do. Go ahead and shuffle. And then draw three. Uh, Stephanie will shuffle. She's not very good at it. She doesn't play cards. Um and we'll kind of but after shuffling we'll kind of fan out the deck and not think too hard and just pull three from three different places cool um you pull three cards and set them out on uh the table and um you lay them out in front of you and the cards you draw or judgment, reversed, the tower, upright, and the knight of cups, upright. Stephanie looks down at them and goes, I don't know what the fuck this means. Uh, you see the penny looks and um, doesn't look surprised, but she looks curious and says, um, well, Judgment, reversed, can mean that you doubt yourself, judge yourself. Uh, are you missing out on people that were waiting for you? Opportunities that were waiting for you? <laughs> That's in the past. 
it can be it can be hard sometimes to move forward after falling short. Maybe you should take some time to reflect on your life uh, to this point. You need to give yourself forgiveness to move forward. Okay. What's the next card? The tower um, signifies change. Um, usually people interpret it as disasters or bad things happening. Um, it doesn't have to be that way. Change is a normal part of our lives. You have to embrace. Brings newness, but it can also bring fear because it means that we have to let go of what we know to be true. When our old ways are no longer useful, we have to replace them. New things, new beliefs, new values. What, what new values are there to learn? And I think there is, there is genuine curiosity in Stephanie's voice. She looks at you and says, um, well, we don't go through life always holding the same things dear, do we? We grow and change and we let go of people and things and places and we learn to value new people and places and things and we relearn what's important and we replace things that hurt us or are dead weight. What if you have no one new to love? <sighs> what a very teenage girl thing to say. Well? There's always new people to love. And even if you never leave Thornridge, which I doubt you'll do, um, old faces, familiar faces can become new people to love because people always change. They're never the same. Someone that you knew two years ago is not the same person you would know now. They're new. Everyone I've known who's changed has changed for the worse. Did they change for the worst or are you only seeing them for what's worst about them? What's the third card mean? The Knight of Cups listens to his heart. He listens to his heart when it comes to important decisions, even if it's not the logical choice or the safe choice. I think this card is offering you an invitation to follow yours. Have you been following your heart, Stephanie? Stephanie maintains eye contact. So Penny would see there's just a little bit of glint, shine in her eyes. Can I roll to keep my cool? Yeah, absolutely. Oh God, that's another failure. That's another six. Well, mark that experience. And she, Stephanie just goes, I've never been able to follow my heart. What, what has changed that would allow me to do that? Penny slides the cards to the side and puts like an old wrinkled hand over yours. Stephanie flinches. She's very gentle and she says, the world is always changing and the people around you are always changing. And the only thing that's stopping you from joining them is you. And it's okay to not be ready. 
but someday you're gonna have to take that step and join the world. Because it doesn't wait. Stephanie is going to pull away. She's gonna pull away, stand up, and just fucking leave. She's just gonna get the fuck out of here. I can roll a run away if you need me to. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, roll to run away. I rolled a nine. I have a negative one volatile. Okay. So yeah. Get away, but choose one. You run into something worse, you cause a big scene, or you leave something behind. I will leave something behind. Okay. I will leave. I think when Stephanie sat down, she had taken her sunglasses off, and she leaves the sunglasses. And as you get up and leave um penny calls behind like to your back and says um if you ever want a book i'll be here stephanie just gets in her car she gets in her car and she texts lucian astor can i talk to you that feels like a good place to stop actually This episode featured Catherine Rarett as the Master of Ceremonies, Percival Walter as Lucian Astor, Quinn Borzen as Eden Grace, Arcadia Reeves as Cassie Rodriguez, Casey Funding as Starfire Miller, Karina Revilla as Cesar Rodriguez Reyes, Victoria Nielsen as Sylvia Striciante, and Saffron Heftigaub as Stephanie Chaplin. The Valkyrie Cycle is co-directed by Catherine Rarett and Saffron Heftigaub and produced by Casey Fleming. This season's editing team includes Catherine Rarit, Karina Revilla, Casey Fleming, Zola Heftigab, and Saffron Heftigab. Music for the Valkyrie Cycle was composed by Haley Adams and Quinn Borison. Art was created by Arcadia Reeves. And our social media team is run by Fabiola Liano. Additional sound effects are sourced from freesound.org and zapsplat.com under the Creative Commons Attribution License. For a full list of credits, please visit our website at midnightceremoniesmedia.com. Again, that's midnightceremoniesmedia.com. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to leave us a review and tell your friends, as word of mouth is one of the best ways to support the show. We appreciate all your support, and thank you so much for listening.